For a lot of players, it can be very difficult to come up with something fun and exciting to play against the English opening, because when your opponent plays 1-4, to C4, they are trying to play a long, slow, boring, maneuvering game where they can play for 40 moves and be slightly better. Well, it turns out that maybe we just got the antidote we've been waiting for, at least for this very particular variation of the English, because we had this game today played in the FTX Crypto Cup. This is a Levon Aronian with the white pieces. He's going up against Pragna Nanta with the black pieces, and and after four moves, they got to this position that has only occurred in the Masters database six times. And in the last year or so, we've seen a couple 2600 rated Grandmasters play this opening, but it's still in its infancy. And here we see Black offering the E4 pawn in order to accelerate development and get a very interesting game. So we're going to be checking this one out. This opening is still new, so the players didn't play perfect. It hasn't all been figured out yet, but I still think it's very interesting, and you might be excited to play this opening in one of your own games. And it starts after C4, E5, Knight to C3, Knight to F6, Knight to F3. And if you can get to this starting position you can play this gambit. Now, it's worth pointing out that basically the only move ever played here is knight to c6. This is what every opponent is going to be expecting. Develop your piece, defend your e-pawn. But today we saw Prague play pawn to e4, and after knight to g5, we begin to think like, uh-oh, has black just overextended this e-pawn? Like, now the pawn's on e4, and it's not easy to directly defend it. So what has he done? Has he just blundered a pawn? Well, no. He had this idea in mind. He was going to be playing pawn to c6, intending on putting this pawn on d5 and just erecting this giant center in the middle of the board. So white decides to take, black recaptures once, white takes back, pawn to d5. This is how we get to the starting position of this gambit. And after takes takes, we get to here where white is going to need to make a decision on where he wants to park the knight. Are you going to go to g3? Are you going to go to c3? And Levon decides to put the knight on g3 which is probably the safest square in the short term and potentially even the strongest move. Like, obviously, you can go to c3, but then white is going to worry that black is going to play pawn to d4 and be able to continue the initiative this way. But in today's game, we saw knight to g3, so this is where we'll be focused. And even though this has basically never been played, this is where we see the novelty. This is where white, uh, where black, sorry, needs to come up with a way to continue to generate threats to try to prove that you've given up a pawn for some reason. And here black plays pawn to h5. This is the new idea immediately threatening to not only attack this knight, but to actually trap it. If, if black is able to play pawn to h4, the knight on g3 just simply gets trapped. And I think here that a lot of players might actually go wrong with the white pieces, but Levon correctly assessed that here he needs to play pawn to e3, and after you get attacked, you have a square for your knight on e2. Now, I would imagine that a lot of players facing h5 would automatically react with pawn to h4, and I just want to point this out because this is actually a common mistake that you might expect if you get to a position like this, and h4 is not particularly good with this knight here on the g3 square because it introduces this idea of bishop to g6, putting some pressure directly on that knight. Now, while that is a good move for black, it turns out that an even stronger move is bishop to g4, keeping an eye on this e2 pawn, thus making it more complicated for white to develop the rest of the pieces. And of course, white now can just move the queen out of the way, but you're playing bishop to d6, you're putting pressure on this knight, and something like this turns out to actually be very pleasant for black. So Levon made a very good decision in this position. After pawn to h5, he played pawn to e3, and when the knight got attacked, he moved it back to e2. Now, here came knight to c6, we see pawn to d4, and now it's up to black to demonstrate that you've sacrificed the pawn, but where is your compensation and how are you going to put some pressure on white? And from white's point of view, if you think about what the opponent wants to do for a second, you realize that they want to play one, two, three moves. They are three moves away from castling, so it's up to black to come up with something to put pressure on the opponent right now. And Pragnananta comes up with this move, queen to f6, with the idea of putting the bishop on g6, keeping an eye on this g2 pawn. And if you're able to keep pressure on g2, the bishop's not going to be able to get developed. You're going to make it very difficult for white to get castled. But white here plays knight to c3, attacking this d pawn, and black ignores it. Like, if you just take time to defend this pawn, Surely white will be able to move this bishop somewhere and just get castled. So instead, we see queen to g6, keeping an eye on g2, offering this d5 pawn. But Levon says, you know what? I'm not interested in the second pawn. And this is kind of going to be 
the theory, the model of how Levon is going to be playing for the rest of this game. He never gets greedy. He never wants that extra pawn. It's going to be hanging for a few turns. He decides instead, I'm just going to be practical. I'm not going to let this knight hop around and do any sort of nonsense. I'm already one pawn up. I now just want to focus on getting the rest of my pieces developed. And that is exactly uh, the approach that we saw him take in this game. Now, black plays bishop to d6, developing a piece bishop to d2 with the idea that after bishop to f5 white has rook to c1 and this is how he's intending on covering the c2 square which perhaps maybe uh black is thinking of doing something on these light squares and we get to this position black gets castled and queen to f3 and this way white is getting ready to potentially take this pawn in the near future and here is where potentially black already has a very annoying position it is just a pawn but black could just continue with bringing all of the stuff into the game creating some sort of central threats uh against white and something like this the computer says is very interesting it's kind of an unbalanced position it's not quite clear what is going on yet but it certainly looks like it would be a lot of fun and very interesting to play this as black but I think Pragnananta here gets a little carried away. He gets excited about playing for checkmate. And he decides to play bishop to g4. And now you're forcing white to take that d5 pawn. He attacks the queen. And now white really doesn't have another chance, uh, any other choice. He has to take on d5. So black played rook to d8, lining up with the queen. But now after pawn to h3 attacking the bishop, black decides to move the bishop out of the way and threaten the queen and he comes up with this move bishop to g3 which is kind of a crazy wacky move and as it turns out might not be completely uh sane uh it might not be completely uh correct because in this position now white needs to move the queen away and it turns out that potentially white can move away to any of these various squares there's a lot of ways for white to continue to try to play for a win and after all all of these bishops are just kind of hanging but levon sticks to the practical approach that he's been going with and he tries to play queen to e4 in order to swap off the queens but this of course gives black the opportunity to save one of the bishops and after the queen moves away he now has the opportunity to potentially move this bishop away if he wants but he doesn't want and he plays rook f to e8 creating this threat of knight takes d4 and obviously white is under a tremendous amount of pressure and the question is should you take this bishop on g3 or not and he correctly assesses yet again no it's not time for greed it is time to develop the rest of the pieces and try to get safe after all now if you do take which apparently is possible if you put this on your computer this is maybe you can take this thing well you're going to get hit with knight to d4 attacking the queen and potentially this knight will be swinging into the b3 square and after you go here obviously your queen always needs to keep her eyes on uh the g3 pawn and after something like knight to b3 uh you're gonna have to if you decide to go somewhere with this guy you're running into moves like rook to d4 obviously in a practical game and this is just a rapid game this is not something white necessarily wants to just walk into especially not the way levon has been approaching this position the entire game so instead we see bishop to e2 Bishop does finally move away. White here is still two pawns up, but after queen to h5, white is basically bailing out into uh, an end game where it's most likely to end up in a draw. Now, if white wants to continue, the computer suggests rook to d1 or king to f1, kind of uncomfortable moves, but perhaps there is a way for white to continue to try to play this for a win. Instead, we see Levon play queen to h5, and after some captures, knight takes d4, and now it's only one pawn, and black still has a tremendous amount of activity. So this is actually now a very level position where white goes back uh, bishop to d3 is played to prevent castling and we'll get to a position where we're trading lots of pieces and that's kind of what happens we get to some end game where it's opposite colored bishops white is still a pawn up but black has a lot of extra activity and of course these end games especially after a rook trade are very well known to be a draw and that's exactly what happened in this game and it kind of petered out uh to a draw which is kind of a safe way for levon to play but hey it's a very dangerous opening and if you don't know what you're doing i think you could expect a lot of players to try to bail out as well so if you like this opening let me know is this uh the kind of gambit that you would play would you go here would you play this would you do that would you play pawn to c6 attack the knight and try to play for an attack i hope you do i hope you like it and i hope you subscribe I really wish you would. Okay, bye!